Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to another video. And uh, this video probably lends truth to the title of the channel, Electronics Old and New. Uh, this is actually a combination of two technologies. Um, old technology, because it does have valves, tubes. New technology, because it uses ICs and everything else, op amps and all that sort of thing. And this is not the normal thing that I do videos on, but I do enjoy working on uh, guitar equipment guitar amps specifically and more specifically even uh, guitar tube amps. Now this uh, amp belongs to someone who's uh, a member of the music school that I do a lot of stuff for and um, I think Father Christmas got a bit upset with him because I don't think there's any bigger punishment than a musician being left between Christmas and New Year in Madeira without his, uh, his amplifier. So I'm trying to sort it out and uh, give it back to the guy as soon as possible. But uh, there are two reasons for me doing this video. One of them is because I, I do want to use the, the opportunity to, to give you a message, and I'll do that at the end. And um, the other one is I was actually quite interested in the way that this type of circuitry combines with the tube radios that I restore normally. One thing you'll find if you, if you start working on guitar equipment, whether it be amps, pedals, whatever you want, you'll find that it actually is very forgiving. This technology is very forgiving. The main problems with um, the design or repair of this of audio equipment don't come into, the, into, this, uh, into this realm. One of the things you always try to overcome when you're doing amplifiers, for example, hi-fi amps, is overcoming noise, overcoming distortion. You don't want that. You don't want any of that. With these guys, one of the purposes of a tube amp for guitar is to produce uh, distortion. Distortion is what gives the uh, tonality of the, the guitar sound, which people want. And distortion is probably a lot more, it is more important than fidelity in, in guitar amplifiers. You'll find that the, the actual design of guitar amps, which is something I want to just show you here on the schematics, is very, very simple. It's a simplified form of amplifier design. No disrespect to the technology or to the users, because that's what they are trying to achieve. But when you look at designing a guitar amplifier or building or repairing a guitar amplifier compared to a uh, hi-fi audio amp, they are miles apart. And I've designed and built a few guitar amps, tube amps myself. And um, actually one of them I was pretty proud of. It was uh, two, a dual uh, EL, EL34 hand-built. The cabinet was made out of uh, Madeira, old Madeira wood. I actually ended up finding that it was far too much for me. <laughs> I couldn't play it nicely enough. So I ended up giving it to a friend of mine who's a musician and he did a review on that. And I'll, I'll link that above because I, I was pretty chuffed with what he could do with something that I built. It, it, it was an amazing feeling. But there, this one here has actually got a very simple uh, issue. When you switch it on, it makes a hell of a lot of noise. I'll show you now. I don't think it's volume dependent. So that tells you a bit. And I'll talk you through this. It's going to be a quick video, I think and a, quite an easy repair. But specifically, I want to go into the schematic and show you the similarities between something like this and w what it's based on and where this relates or corresponds to what we are used to with the audio sections of the radio uh, tube radios that I restore here. So let, let's get cracking and see what's wrong with this thing. Okay, before we look at the circuit, I'm going to switch it on, see what we've got. What we've got here, I've got this thing uh, connected to the dim bulb tester. I'm not going to limit the voltage. It's on 230 volts, but it's going through the dim bulb tester. And we've basically got a tube amp here, power transformer, output transformer, pretty small one, two preamp tubes and one power tube, which makes this very, very uh, interesting because it's, um, it's a class, it's a single ended uh, tube amp or output stage, which is identical to what most of the tube radios that I do use one output tube. It's even the same tube. It's the EL84. So let's just get this thing ready and, and test it. Put the gain up there. There's no uh, input device there. Master volume down to zero. It's got a digital signal uh, processor system in here that adds flanger and uh, chorus and delay, you know, all those gadgety things. It's got reverb. So you switch on the, put on the on button. The standby is off. This thing has got a uh, on button and standby. The standby just leaves the uh, high voltage to the uh, anodes of the power tubes uh, switched off until the heaters have warmed up. But 
if we put that on, give it a few seconds and then switch it on, and this is what we get. If you can hear that noise, it was actually worse when I tested it the first time around. This thing was cracking like crazy. But you see, I've got a hell of a lot of noise coming out with absolutely no master volume. The volume is on zero here, and it's still noisy as hell. Which tells us that the problem is after the volume pot. And the volume pot is actually pretty close to the end, as I'll show you in a second on the schematic. So my guess is there's something wrong with the output tube. And it's very, very simple to test that. I'm going to switch this off again. And I'm going to replace the L84 with a, a used one, but one I know that works. And we'll see if we've got rid of the problem. Let me do that. Right, I've got a different tube in here. Here's the old EL84. It's a soft tech. That one's just one that I had in here. Let's see what happens when we switch this on. Again, volume is on minimum, the master volume. When I put the volume up, Well, looks like we've got the same problem. Still very noisy, fairly noisy, without volume at all. This thing, this thing should be completely silent. So there's something wrong with that output tube there. I'll just flip it around in a second and see what it is. But it is rather strange. Let's flip it around and see. There's also a hum. Okay, we're skipping forward a bit because I lost some video. It's happened before. It was recording and I um, stopped it instead of starting it. But anyway, let me tell you what happened. I took it out, as you saw. I swapped out the um, tube. Got no difference. Still made the noise. The noise was slightly different. It wasn't the crackling that I'd heard originally. But then what I decided to do is uh, resolder the pins on the tube. So... If it's not the tube, it could be the, the pins. And according to the schematic, all you have before the, the tube is uh, the grid biasing. Uh, you've got a grid resistor, grid stopper, and you've got a grid uh, resistor to ground, and then you've got a capacitor and it goes to the volume pot. Well, the problem is it doesn't. The problem is when I check the schematic and I check here, I've got different things here. So uh, I think I know what it is and I'm gonna show you. Let's see if we can get that noise back up. Remember, I've got the uh, master volume all the way down to zero. Switch it on, let it warm up. Okay, let's give it. If this doesn't make a noise now, I'm going to get really upset. It's humming. You hear that? Come on, make a noise.
be that pot. That just makes a lot of noise because you've got the uh, digital signal, signal processing in place. It's like a hiss. The, uh, where's the reverb? The reverb will increase the noise as well. But look at that. Can you hear that? That is the noise I was hearing. It could be the pot that's either damaged or the solder connections aren't, uh, aren't very good on here. Because this spot happens straight after the uh, preamp tubes instead of happening just before the power tube. I'll show you that on the schematic. So I'm going to, this might be the problem, unless it needs to be grounded and it might not be properly grounded. So let me try this, connect this to ground. This isn't properly grounded. Could that be all it is? See that? It's like the ground is not making properly. These grounds are not very good. Okay, we've got a ground uh, problem here. One of these things is not uh, properly connected to ground, so I'm going to have to recheck all of them and go through it again. But let me just show you the schematic and show you why this was a little bit surprising. Supposedly, the entire schematic for this uh, Epiphone valve special. And I'll show you this part first, which is the most important section and the most pertinent to the discussion I had earlier. This is the output section. Now, the reason I mentioned tube radios is that this thing is incredibly, incredibly similar to the uh, typical tube radio. What we normally have is uh, we've got the output transformer here. Uh, we've got uh, AC coming into the output transformer and it goes through the output transformer and it comes out here and it goes to the anode of the uh, power tube, which in this case is an EL84, exactly the same as the, the most of the radio, the German radios that I do. Uh, not all of them, but most. We've got a screen resistor, which uh, is usually the second B+. Usually what we have between, uh, hang on, let me see, we've already got a resistor here. This is 300 volts DC, this is 325. So this is slightly higher than what we used to. But other than that, this is exactly what we normally see. We sometimes have a capacitor here across the primary just to uh, avoid oscillations. Remember that with radio, you've got very high frequencies. Some of the frequencies can uh, leak into the output tube or the output section. So you want to short it out before it gets uh, through. But other than that, you've got a typical tube radio output stage. Your heater voltages here, four and five, You've got a uh, cathode resistor to ground, this is 220 ohms. There's a 22 microfarad capacitor cathode bypass, which we normally have a 50 on here. We have a grid stopper in this case. Sometimes we don't have grid stoppers on the tube radios, but we've got a 1.5K grid stopper, 220K uh, grid uh, to ground resistor. On tube radios, we normally have probably a bit more. But other than that, we then have the coupling capacitor here which is uh, 22 nanofarads, which again is very common on tube radios. So what I wanted to draw your attention to is that this thing here is the typical output stage of a German tube radio, okay? Which means that the German tube radio has a, a very, very usable uh, audio amplifier stage for guitar, as I've shown in uh, an experiment I did with a, a preamp for a tube radio to use with a guitar. If I remember, I'll link that above. Now, this is where things get a bit awry. Usually, from here, you've got the volume pot, okay? That's very typical. I know that with tube radios, you've got a whole lot of tonal control and everything else, but you would normally have this thing going to the wiper of the volume pot. Well, what do we have here? Well, we've got the wiper of the volume pot, which is perfect, okay? Perfect. That's exactly what we expect. The problem is that this is not what we have. 
what we have here is this line here goes straight to this pin of this TL0072 op amp. So this volume control doesn't happen here. It happens before these op amp stages. And I actually thought maybe the op amp stages were a little bit awry, but they actually aren't. Let me show you. This thing goes back. This is a filter system here. Uh, how much gain do we have on here? Well, we should have 220 divided by 10, 22 times gain on here. Okay, fair enough. What it does do though, is that it amplifies any noise here by 22 times. You see, this is the uh, inverting op amp configuration. And that means that uh, you've got a, the uh, resistor here from the output to the input, the feedback resistor 220K. The input resistor is 10K. So the gain is the, that one divided by that one, 22. So any noise you have on here is amplified 22 times to there, which then goes to through your capacitor into your output stage. That's why this thing is a little noisy, even without volume. What happens before that? Well, before that, you've got this uh, coupling capacitor. So that's just let the audio through. You've got another TL072 uh, op amp with a 47K by, by, uh, feedback resistor there and a 47K in here, which means that it's a unity gain, but because you've got these components here, you've got a, basically this works as a high pass filter. This works as a, what is that? A low pass. Is it low pass? No, it's, it's also high pass. It's a shelving filter, I think it is. And this thing basically takes a signal from here, unity gain to there, through there, no, no drop because of that capacitor. It's pretty high, one microfarad, and then times 22 here. So any noise on here, amplified to there. Any noise on here, goes straight through to here, Amplify to there. So now we're at this point. And what is this point? Well, this point is where supposedly the audio comes in from your preamp. But hey, not yet. Hang on. Not yet. Because we've also got this section coming in here. This signal here is a combination. It's the sum of this signal and also, where are we? This signal. This signal is the uh, digital signal processing level through a resistor here, which then gets summed to there. And where are we? It will short. Yeah, okay. That transistor, this comes from the switch. This is a switch, foot switch. Here we go. Foot switch to activate or deactivate this DSP module. We won't worry about that. I, I don't like these things. I don't like these at all. But anyway, they, they perform their, their job. But what we have here is the signal comes from this op amp, which again, if we look, forget about the, uh, the filtering components, you've got 10K there, and you've got a, what is that, a bandpass filter over here. So there is possibly very little gain. And here again, we've got a, a unity gain buffer, and we back to here. So our signal from here goes through unity gain buffer to there, some sort of filter here, probably a bandpass filter of sorts, to there, goes through to there with uh, some gain possibly, depending on the frequencies, and then it goes into that one which gets, you know, gets sent through. But you've got gain on these things, and you've got noise being generated all the way across, which ultimately gets to your output tube. But what we're interested in now is here, because this signal comes from, we follow this through, comes from there. And this is a typical guitar preamp. You've got your signal coming in. Uh, you've got a dual. This is just one tube, two uh, triodes and one tube. They've put them perfectly in parallel. If you notice, signal goes into that grid. It also comes down here, across here, across here, across there, into that grid. They've joined the anodes. They've joined the cathodes. So this is a cathode biased um, dual triode stage with a you know, the anode resistor over there, feeding the two of them, and your signal gets amplified from this point to that point, and it goes through there to a gain pot. Now this gain pot controls the amount of that signal. There's also a drop here, you see, this is, this is already dropping it by half. Even if this gain pot is on max, your signal is going from there through a one meg and a one meg. So this signal here will be half of that one. So you're creating gain, 
then dropping gain. Okay, you can create distortion if you want to and uh, reduce the gain, which is one of the purposes of some of these stages. But ultimately, the first stage should give you as much gain as possible so you can raise the signal to noise ratio and reduce the overall noise of the, of the, uh, of the amp. But anyway, you then uh, take it off from here, from the gain, from the gain pot through another mega ohm grid stopper. This is a pretty big one. But anyway, it goes to the grid of that tube. That tube is the one triode of the second tube. A single triode is used here. There's the other one. But this one acts as a normal triode gain stage with another 100k uh, anode resistor. It's cathode biased as well with a cathode bypass cap. So this produces more gain based on the amount that it gets from there. It amplifies it. And then all you've got here is a uh, cathode follower. This stage, as you can see, is different. You should look this up. This is uh, these these stages are very interesting. These are the basic components of most of guitar amps. This is a cathode follower, and all it does is it takes a signal to there, and from there it is passed through to here. Now here you've got a hundred k resistor, and your signal is replicated exactly from there to there. From there to there, it's inverted and amplified. From there to there, there's no gain. It's actually a slight drop in gain and it goes through without being uh, inverted and that then feeds your tone stack and this would be probably a what is this one this would be a fender tone stack you get basically four types of tone stacks the component values differ there's actually a very good uh, some good articles on the on the net about the different tone stacks and what sort of um, what sort of result you get from them the fender the vox the marshall the the Boschendal, I think it's pronounced that way. And your signal comes out of your treble here. There's actually a gain drop on here. This is not a gain stage. Everything to do with tone control on here is an attenuation. It attenuates different frequencies differently, but it always ends up with a signal over here, which is lower in amplitude and of a different tonal component of this one. So that goes out of here and it should go from here. It should go to the volume pot, for example, if there was no signal processing, but there is. But what they've got is they've got the tone pot, the volume pot, the master volume actually happens here on this line before it goes into all this stuff. This is sort of, what would you call this? Well, it actually makes sense if you think about it. They want the, um, the tone of the amp, the tone of the actual preamp, the two preamp, to be completely um, shaped by the, the gain control and by the, the, um, the tone control. So you get the, get the the tone that you want, in other words, the amount of distortion that you want, right, before you mix in the uh, signal processing, before that, okay? So that's why they have it coming in here. They control the volume, the master volume of the signal which has been shaped by the preamp tubes or by the preamp stage and then they feed it into this whole sort of master volume uh, this this whole um, signal processing stage which sort of acts as a cabinet simulator you know you can get different uh, guitar cabs but it, it shapes it slightly before it mixes it with the signal from the signal processing which comes out of here this signal that comes out here goes to there but it also goes down to the DSP board, which does all the chorus and flanger and all that sort of thing. And um, I think also, where's the reverb? I think the reverb is in here as well. I'm not actually sure. I'm not actually sure. Anyway, that's what we got. So we've got a lot of noise. <laughs> Let me just get out here. We've got a lot of stuff between here, which is where your, where your tube preamp stage ends, here and here. Okay, now if you just had this as a simple tube guitar amplifier, what I would do is I'd take the signal from here through a master volume pot and to there. And I would do away with all this stuff because I don't like this stuff, but that's up to you. But ultimately, this from here to there, this stage at the top, these, sta these two stages at the top, this is your tube guitar ampli amplifier. It's single ended because it's got one tube. This is run in class A as opposed to having the push-pull sections. 
So this is a single tube, class A, single-ended um, tube guitar amplifier, and I like them. I like them a lot. There are a few things you've got to be careful with single-ended, and that is that um, your voltage coming here, your B plus and your B1 plus, so your main B plus and your screen voltage, especially this one here, should be very, very well filtered. And the reason is that whatever you get coming in here goes to the tube and it actually becomes part of the audio as well. So hum can be heard quite more prominently with a single-ended than it can with a push-pull. The reason is that with a push-pull, you've got another tube here acting 180 degrees away, out of phase. And that means that whatever hum comes into the middle of the transformer, remember with push-pull, the B plus comes into the middle winding, the middle of the two windings. Whatever comes in is amplified one way this or by this tube and inverted by the other one, so it sort of cancels out. Not with a single-ended amplifier. So what have we got for the supplies here? This is the 325, A and B is 300. So let's have a look at the supply. Well, the power supply, you know, after you go all the through all the uh, voltage switching over here, and it's good, it's got a dual switch, so it actually switches off both um, the live and the neutral, in case you get them backwards. But the main one we're looking at, this is the standby switch. This is the power switch. The standby switch actually produces your B+. Now, when you switch this switch on, which is your power switch, right, what happens is the transformer starts working, and these things operate. This is the 12-volt AC plus minus 12-volt AC, which is probably going to the op amps and everything else, and the DSP board. You've also got this winding, which is the 6.3 volt, and they've actually got, um, they haven't referenced it straight to ground. You've got 6.3 volts across these two coming here. And what they've done is they've raised it by 100 ohm, half watt resistors. Yeah, these two resistors, they basically create, created a center tap, a false center tap to ground, which um, actually helps with the hum reduction. And these are the two. Uh, heater winding, uh, heater voltages, the two heater vo the, the heater voltage connections. But this would not be on. There would be nothing at this point if you have the standby switch off. So you, you switch this on, you let everything work, and this starts heating up the tubes. And then when you know the tubes are okay, you hit it with that voltage, and your B-plus is produced across this uh, full-wave bridge rect rectifier using one n 7 it's perfectly adequate. There's a fuse over here in case one of the uh, one of the capacitor shorts or something like that. And then you've got your first filter cap. And across the filter cap, there's a 470K 1 watt resistor. This is basically to bleed off voltage if you disconnect it. It does nothing else. But 22 microfarads is fairly low. And that's producing your A, your 325 volts. And then we've got a 4.7K to B, and they still have the 100 ohm at the top. And then you've got a 10K to C. So these are the the preamp tube uh, supplies, but this thing is small. This 22 microfarads is actually not, it should be more in my opinion. I've found that um, with single-ended, I, I usually put 100 microfarads on here, and you can do that if it's uh, driven by adequate transformer and also an adequate um, um, bridge rectifier. If you have a selenium rectifier, you cannot use very high capacitances here because it'll burn out your your anode uh, filament, like a little, little minute little wire that actually produces your output, uh, the surge of current into a hundred into a big microf uh, hundred microfarad capacitor will actually short that out or burn it out. But with something like this, I would put in at least forty-seven. I'd probably be inclined to put a small resistor here, and put a hundred microfarads on here. That's if you put a small resistor in here in line with that fuse it stops that inrush. It doesn't stop it. It reduces the, 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 the inrush current, so you don't have any problems with the transformer or the, or the diodes. Um, and it'll hold this, uh, it'll, it'll feed a 100 microfarad capacitor perfectly. But anyway, this is how they've designed it. This is how they built it. As I said, the only problem is there's an error where this volume part is, is wrong. This actually made perfect sense for a normal tube um, amplifier. This is where a normal volume pot would be, just before the output stage, but it's not there, it's there. It's at the output of the preamp stage, of the tube preamp stage. And that's what confused me a bit, because 
when you put the volume down on zero, if you take if it was here and you put this on zero, you've got absolutely nothing on here. So you shouldn't hear anything on this. And the only noise you should hear at the uh, the speaker in that case is if you have noisy resistors or bad tube or something like that or lots of hum on your transformer. And I actually thought that I I actually shorted this to ground across this resistor to make sure that I had no input on here and there was no noise. So the noise was coming from before that and I was rather surprised because all you have from here to there is a capacitor. However, there's one more thing here. You don't just have a capacitor. First of all, you don't have it going to there. You have it going to there. But the other problem is this length of wire from this point all the way to there, it's like a, it snakes all the way across this, the, the, the board. And that's really not a good idea. Um, you, you've got a very sensitive part of the circuit here. It's going to a high impedance uh, part of the, the tube here. So noise pickup here is critical. In fact, on tube radios, what you normally find is that this capacitor is a shielded capacitor. The link is left as short as possible, precisely so it doesn't pick up noise. And in this case, we've got a huge track, very thin track, but it's, it's long, it's winding, it goes all the way across the board before it gets to this point here. That's not a good idea. I mean, ultimately, what they could have done is they could have not put that track in and put a little piece of shielded cable from there straight to that capacitor and then going straight into that because that is actually pretty close. These components are very close to the tube, which is the way it should be. But from there to there, I would have used a piece of shielded cable, shielded to ground so that it wouldn't pick up noise. But again, that's how they've designed it. So um, what do I think might be wrong? Well, it could be the boiling pot's not here, but it could be problem with these grounds. The pots may not be grounded properly. So I need to check the grounds and see if we can get rid of that uh, of the crackle. I'll get back to you when I find something. I finished re-soldering or retouching up the um, all the pots, all the solder connections there. I redid them and I thought everything was fine. I've got this on. Volume is on zero as it was before. But watch this. When I touch the uh, touch the on-off switch, nothing. When I touch the standby switch, See that? That switch is a bit messed up. And I think that's probably a combination of things, but this could be the main problem. So I've got want to do one of two things. I've got to either uh, clean it up. It could be possible to clean it up. It's a double pole, double throw switch. Double pole, yeah, double pole, double throw switch. So I could try clean it, or alternatively, I'm going to have to replace it because this is what's causing the problem. It's literally breaking the connection to the B+. Okay, well, I removed the switch and cleaned it up, and it looks like we've solved that problem as well. This thing is, uh, you can actually uh, dismantle them, and I don't know how long this will last. So, for reference, if this thing happens again, we know that we just have to buy a new switch like that one, which I don't have, and getting one in Madeira is probably going to be a quite a task, but you can get them. Well, seems to be done for now. And I want to try something else. I want to show you something. I want to let you hear the hum on this thing. What I want to do is, I've got the gain on zero. I'll put the microphone in front of the speaker, just to the side of it, put some volume up. Volume master volume is on zero, master volume is on maximum. Now, if I take the uh, reverb, it starts hissing some more, which is natural. If I activate the SP, if I activate digital signal processing, it makes more noise, as is expected. But, if I take the gain up to maximum, that's what you get. That's pretty high. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in another 22 microfarad capacitor across that first one and we'll see what we get. See if we can improve that, if we want to improve that at all. Okay, you know all those warnings you get with tube stuff? Be careful, you're doing so at your own risk. Well, here's one. 
I've got a 22 microfarad capacitor, 450 volts, connected to ground and to that fuse there, which is the B plus fuse. So this is going straight to the output transformer. And I'm going to put the microphone in front and I'll take it off, put it on. Doesn't make that much difference. Listen to this. Okay, volume, master volume is on max. I put the gain up, it's just going to give it preamp noise. I want to hear the, uh, the result on the output stage. That's with it on, I'm going to take off the negative. You can actually hear the hum reduce ever so slightly, but it is very, very slight. It's a lot less than I expected. So uh, perhaps that 22 microfarad at the B plus is not <laughs> badly calculated. They probably knew what they were doing. This thing is working fine. Just checking voltages before I disconnect everything. I have learned the hard way. It's the only way to learn. So let me put this whole thing together and we'll see if we get some sound out of it and what it sounds like. Well folks, it looks like the problem is solved. This thing's not making the clicks anymore. None of that's making clicks anymore. So what, what did I do here? First of all, I diagnosed it wrong. It was not the output tube. When you have a fault or when you have a situation that, may, that remains when you put the master volume down, usually it's after the volume. And usually after the volume, all you've got is the output stage. This case proved different, as I've shown in the schematic. But um, these things are always a bit like this. Uh, the the uh, diagnosis is a little bit iterative. You try something, if it works, you, you, you know, you might have found the problem. If it doesn't, you, you've got to keep looking. And that's what happened. I literally found that uh, click on that standby switch when I was testing it after thinking that I got all the the problem solved. I did do the uh, retouching of the solder on the pots and also on the tubes because sometimes, especially the output tube, gets very hot and uh, the solder can crack and you get cold solder joints. So it's always a good thing since you have it open to do that. Something else I did was I cleaned all the pots with uh, contact cleaner. The volume pot and the master pot, the gain and the master pot were a little scratchy, but it seems to be there and this hum is normal. This is the normal noise that you get from this thing. Unfortunately, I don't like it. I've never liked hum. So that's the way it is. And what I've got now, I've, I've got this, uh, this wireless guitar system. You put it into your guitar, you put it into the input, and it works. And you don't have to drag cables around and it sort of tends to make for a little bit more practice time. Uh, I don't really do much. As my friend Daniel will tell you, he keeps criticizing the fact that the guitars are there more on display than anything else, but uh, they look cool. Uh, I'm not. So that's basically it. I think I can get this uh, amp back to the lad and uh, give him a bit of practice time before the end of the holiday seasons. It, it sounds like it should sound. I, I don't, personally, I don't particularly like this, you know, it's it's a guitar amp. Guys who know how to play properly can actually give you a proper demo. I can't. I just uh, strum and mess around a bit. And finally, the message that I want to do, pass on. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all especially for all the support this year, this past year. It's been amazing from you guys. Um, the number of subscribers is up. The comments are up. The views are up. People are really participating. And I have noticed the, um, the channel has become a very, almost a personal thing for me. Um, I know why I recognize a lot of you guys who comment. And um, I think you, you sort of relate and we relate. And I like that. I like that. It's not just a, another channel, a cold channel. I like the fact that it's becoming a sort of a, a friendship and has become a friendship. It has from my point of view to a lot of you, and um, I'd like to welcome more and more of you into that into that circle if you want. So uh, once again, thank you for all your support. I hope this season uh, brings you joy and uh, safety and happiness, and I hope you, you and your family uh, go into the new year with optimism and uh, that the new year brings some good stuff, that the crazy times uh, are finally put behind us, 
and we can go ahead and uh, get back into normal. Okay, I don't like this new normal. I don't think anybody does. I like the old normal. Call me a traditionalist, but I think they should restore the old normal and bring it back into use. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now, and especially stay safe.